Hello, my name is Dara McAnulty and I love to write. I wrote this book when I was 14 years old. I'm 16 now and writing about the things I love, about the natural world, nature, the world that surrounds us has always been one of the most fun things that I've ever done. And it's also so, so much fun to write about those sort of things and to write in general. I began by just loving nature, loving the natural world and just trying to explore everywhere. So this book is a, a story of a boy, me, trying to find his way in the world and it's uh, exploring how much I love the natural world. I'm autistic and that means that I experience the world in a slightly different way. Um, it means that I feel everything a little bit more intensely. I can get overwhelmed and just want to crawl away and curl into a ball. Um, but being out in nature for me really helped with that. It, because I feel more at peace in nature. It feels a lot more calm in a sense. And it gave me a place to go to when it, things were getting really, really tough. It gave me a lifeline in a sense. And it's that place where I feel at home. But being autistic, I feel has almost been a gift in a sense for me. It's allowed me to think about things in a, in a different way, to see things from a different angle. Um, because this world feels like a blaze of colour to me. This beautiful cacophony of sound and colour and music and ideas. And sometimes it, it does rush into you and it sort of feels a bit extreme. But it's beautiful. And it's, I think if when you pay attention to all of the little details, um, like I do. I think you can sort of gain a greater appreciation for the world that we live in. So writing was my way of trying to learn about the world that I had experienced and the natural world. I feel like once you, when you see stuff and when you're listening or maybe when you're smelling or um, hearing, you sort of don't really, I don't really understand it when, when it first comes in. But when I write it down, it all seems all so simple. It all sort of clicks. And by writing it down, I realized that because when I was um, really, really young, I used to love looking at blackbirds um, or more, more um, specifically, the shadow of a blackbird on my parents' bedroom's curtain as it would sing. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I was doing. But one day the, the sound of the blackbird stopped and I was utterly terrified. But I started to read and I started to try and learn. And I wrote down my experiences. And now when I know that the blackbird stopped singing is because it's um, just gone away for a time. It's gone away um, for the winter because it only sings in the spring. And writing allows me to understand that. And that's why it's so, so important for me. I think that to be a naturalist, to be someone who loves nature, all you really need is to love nature. You need, all you need is a bit of passion, a bit of curiosity. And I remember this, this book here is really special to me because this was the first book that I bought with my own money. I remember um, begging to go to the bookshop after learning about mushrooms to buy my first ever mushroom book. And I've loved mushrooms ever since because they're so fascinating. They've got these, they're so, so interesting. And the more you learn about them, the more, the more incredible they get. So did you know that what you see at the, on the soil, um, just peeking um, above the soil, is only a small part of a massive organism? Um, the biggest mushroom in the world, I think, is about 20 square kilometers across. They cover the entirety of the forest 
When you walk through a forest, you're basically walking on top of a layer, uh, this web of mushroom. And they can almost communicate with each other as well um, across vast, vast distances. And I feel like once you dig a little bit deeper, it, you just see this incredible complex system that just blows your mind. And that was what really got me about mushrooms is that, oh my word, there's so much more here than I realized. I'm just gonna show you a few of my favorite mushrooms. We've got the fly agaric here. Um, it's like your traditional fairy toadstool sort of mushroom with its beautiful um, white spots on the red. Um, then we've got, ooh, I just love flicking through mushroom books because you never, the, you kind of just stumble upon these beautiful mushrooms, like they use brackets fungi. Um, so they sort of, you, have you ever seen them sticking to um, trees? And they're really, really hard. They're almost like rocks sticking out of a tree. Um, I find them absolutely beautiful. Of course, if you ever find mushrooms out in the forest, do not eat them. They can be poisonous. Um, only ever eat them with an expert. Um, that's my disclaimer. But they're so beautiful. And I feel like if you just go outside and take a little bit of notice about the incredible world that surrounds us, you can see the, these beautiful um, jewels everywhere. I think there is a greater understanding of what being autistic means. We, I think we understand it a little bit more, but we still need people to just take that little bit of care in a sense, um, to realize that not everybody in this world is the same. And we all have something unique and special um, to give to it, to make the world a better place. I think just showing that little bit of compassion to all of us um, makes us stronger in a sense. And I do think that it's getting better. I, people are learning, uh, but just taking that little bit of compassion. I feel like compassion is one of those things that we all need. We, because it just expands your world and it stops you from closing off and it allows you to learn. And I think that's the most important thing. In, what, in one sense, lockdown has allowed us to focus in our attention on a really small space like our gardens. And I feel like just taking that time to go out into your garden or just if you're living in an apartment, just taking that time to look outside and to notice all those little details can make your life so much more exciting because you go out on this voyage of discovery into your garden or into wild spaces and you never know what you're going to find under a rock, under a log. And that I think is, it's beautiful, it, it is beautiful.